Welcome to the Octavius Gould Experience, and I'm your host, Octavius Gould. Today, I am bringing to you episode number 17, titled, How to Name Your New Business. I was inspired to record today's episode after a great friend reached out to me seeking advice on naming the new business she's in the process of starting. Having faced this same challenge in 1997, when I founded my own business, I recall the process I took that initially paid off, but in the long run led to me changing my business name. My friends, choosing a name for your new startup endeavor can be the determining factor between success or failure. Selecting the wrong name can confuse potential customers, make it challenging for you to align your marketing with your product or service, and even cause expensive legal problems. On the flip side, choosing the right business name can catapult your branding, making marketing to position your business exciting and rewarding. Here are some tips I shared during episode number three. 27 million Americans are starting or running new businesses based on data from the 2017 Global Entrepreneurship U.S. Report. According to the Bureau of Labor uh, Statistics, more than 4.4 million new businesses were created in the U.S. in 2020, and this was during a global pandemic. Approximately 20% of small businesses fell within the first year. And I'm quite sure if you have ever started a new business or you aspire to start a new business, you've heard about the number of businesses that fell in the first year. But also by the end of year two, 30% of businesses will have fell. That's a scary fact. Now, I am not trying to instill fear in anyone I am just trying to underline the importance of every business decision an entrepreneur makes, including naming his or her business. Keep in mind, it's the first thing customers will see. Here are 10 tips on how to come up with a compelling and powerful name for your business. Number one, conduct brainstorming sessions. This can be done alone with friends who you respect or even with a business coach. What you want to do is make a list of every word or phrase that you can come up with. Then grab a dictionary or thesaurus and use it to find synonyms or related words. Another tip is to look at the Latin version of certain words. You want to ensure that the business name makes sense for the industry and the type of products and services you will sell. Also, Make sure that the name sounds good and looks appealing on marketing material. Number two, avoid hard to spell names. Keep in mind, if you're going to name your business like my first name, Octavius, you're going to have issues because people like to put that second O in my name. (laughs) So make sure your name is easy to spell. This will prevent prospects from getting confused when Googling or searching for your name of your business online. There are so many reasons why businesses fail, especially in the first and second year. You don't want to give customers or prospects anxiety over trying to type your business name correctly into search engines. Number three, make your name memorable. Marketing will not have a great ROI, that's a return on investment, if prospects forget the name of your business or brand shortly after being exposed to it. Try to be creative and come up with a business name that will convey something meaningful about your business, but don't get too cute. You want to keep it simple. One way to do that is to use descriptive words because you want people to be able to quickly comprehend what your business is all about. I know, I know Uber, Google, and Amazon didn't follow this rule of thumb on their way to becoming household names. However, Those companies spent serious money on marketing and branding. Number four, avoid names that restrict or limit growth. Picking too narrow of a name may put you in a box in the future. Imagine if Phil Knight, the founder of Nike, called his company Swoosh Shoes. Now, they sell all kinds of paraphernalia and apparel. That would not have worked. (laughs) So stay away from names that will put you in a box and limit your ability to grow. Also, stay away from names with your state or your town because you may relocate. 
a lot of people like to put global into their names because they want to sound as if they're a large company, global consulting. But what happens if you focus solely on the U.S.? Or if you're talking to prospects that they want some type of boutique consulting firm, depending on the type of industry you're in. So be careful trying to, again, be too cute. Stick to what you do and who you are and what you want your target audience to feel that you're all about as it relates to the value proposition that you'll bring to the table. Also, be careful with naming your organization something specific to the product or service that you're offering. Because if you decide to expand or move away from that core product or service, you would jam yourself up. Another thing people like to do is to use the owner's name in the business name and some variation. Now that could also potentially limit your growth, but it is a quick way to get your business up and running if you cannot find a name that you really are sold on. You know, if you ever want to bring in a business partner, that may also put you in a tough situation. However, you can always change your business name later. Number five. Conduct a thorough internet search. So after narrowing down your potential business names to about three or five, three to five, conduct a Google search on those names. Oftentimes you'll realize that a different business is already using that name, but all is not lost because you can try variations of the same name. Number six, conduct a search on your state's Secretary of State website. You want to make sure that the names you covet is not similar to a business name that is already registered. If it is too similar to an existing name, the Secretary of State may not allow you to register it. And this is the same organization that you'll need to incorporate your new business with for a fee to become a legal business entity once you get established. And when you do, make sure that you follow the naming rules for your business structure. For example, if you're a limited liability company, LLC must be written or typed at the end of your business name, especially on agreements and legal documents. DBA, if you're doing business as and other forms of incorporation. So make sure that you understand the state laws as it relates to how you must name your business and what you must put on the end of that business name. Number seven, you can be really creative because I didn't know this prior to doing the research for this episode. There are business name generators out there. Here's what I'm talking about. There are websites that will help you and even existing business owners come up with names for their business that best suit their industry or brand. And these things are free. All you need to do is type a few words into the dialogue box at the site and it will generate an array of business name ideas in seconds. And here are a few business name generators for you to check out. Namesnack.com. That's N-A-M-E-S-N-A-C-K.com. This business name generator combines machine learning keywords and other naming techniques to help you discover unique names for your brand. They'll also show if there are domain names available for the words as well and give you options if the domain is taken. For example, xyz.com may be taken. They may recommend xyz.net. Then you also have Wordoid, W-O-R-D-O-I-D. Now, this naming generator helps you with naming your product, your company, domain, and more. They will help you create pronounceable and brandable made up names that you can make your business stand out. And then lastly, another one that I found during my research is Shopify business name generator. And all you got to do is describe your brand in one word and enter that into the Shopify name generator. And it will provide you with hundreds of options for names that you can utilize for your new business. So cool. Technology is great. You just have to research what's out there and make sure that you use something that is reputable 
because you also have to be aware of malware scams and things of that nature. But I checked out Shopify business name generator, word oid and name snack. They're legit. Try one of them. Number eight, secure your domain name. I recommend that you secure .com domain name for your business rather than an alternative such as .net or .org. If a business already owns your desired .com name, try to ascertain if the business is even established or just have it parked. There are so many business professionals out there and entrepreneurs who have purchased domain names, but they're not utilizing them, or they may have purchased a domain name for a business that has since dissolved, and they will sell it to you. You can check on the availability of domain names on sites such as GoDaddy.com, Google Domains, Name.com, and even NetworkSolutions.com. And these are all websites that if you type in your preferred domain, they will tell you if that domain is available, but they will also give you alternatives as well. And in many cases, they will help you identify who owns that particular domain. That's called who is W H O I S. That's a tool specifically at GoDaddy and network solutions that will show you the name or the business that owns a particular domain. And in many cases, a fee, if it's up for sale. Number nine, conduct a trademark search. Do a search at uspto.gov to get an idea as to whether you can trademark or service mark the name that you've selected for your business. And then number 10, after you go through steps one through nine and you come up with a great name that's really compelling and your business change as you pivot through economic conditions or growth, don't be afraid to change your name at a future date. For example, when I founded my executive search firm, I called my name, the name of my business, the Gould Group. I utilized my last name. And at first it was cool. There weren't many organizations out there called the Gould Group. Once the internet got popular, other organizations started popping up. It became easier for people to start businesses. One day I am doing a Google search and not only were there about seven other organizations called the Google Group, there were two organizations that were in the same industry. They were executive recruiting firms with the same name. One looked as if they weren't even incorporated and doing business. The other, um, I couldn't really tell. So I just did a tremendous job for several years, making sure that I utilize SEO technology to make sure that the name of my business always showed up first when someone did a Google search. But that just got tiring after a while. And as I started to pivot from executive search into leadership development and executive coaching, I made a decision to change my business name to Goldhawk Partners. I won't get into the reason why, but it was a smart move at the time because it allowed me to rebrand my organization as I moved into focusing on new services. Although I still did executive search, my core service became executive coaching and leadership development. And in that industry, a lot of organizations utilize the word partners at the end of their business name. So, you know, you want to, Make sure that you find a business name that you find compelling and intriguing, but also look at the industry and figure out how different organizations in that particular industry have named their business as well. And then that will just generate some ideas for you. But at the end of the day, if you come up with a name and you operate your business as such under that particular name, you always have the option of changing that name. And it's not overly expensive. I think it cost me a hundred and something bucks to file the appropriate paperwork with the Secretary of State. My friends, this is an exciting process when you're going through naming your business.
But what you want to make sure that you do is bring in other people who you respect, creative thinkers who can allow you to tap into their creativity as well, because you may have a great name, but in just talking to your friends and your associates and your inner circles, they may show you how you can tweak that name to make it even more compelling. My friends, if you ever covet compelling content on entrepreneurship or leadership, please hit like, share, and subscribe to my podcast today. This will allow you to be alerted to future episodes. Thank you so much. I'll see you on the next episode. Carpe diem.